Pulp Crazy. Please subscribe, like, and comment if you're enjoying the videos. Doing an episode on the decline or death of illustrated cover art is something that I've wanted to do for a while. Keep in mind, when I talk about illustrated cover art, I'm talking about actual cover illustrations, not clip art covers, not photo covers, and certainly not AI art. I'm talking Frank Frazetta, Roy Krenkel, Ken Kelly, Boris Vallejo, Jolie Bell, Rowena, Joe Jusco, just to name a handful of the big ones. Earlier this week, I was online searching around for Glenn Cook and Black Company news. Glenn Cook is kind of old school. He doesn't have his own website, Twitter account, any social media presence. As a fan, you have to be pretty vigilant you know, doing Amazon searches, Google searches, YouTube searches, just to see if there's any news about him or any of his writing projects. That's when I stumbled on a new cover to the first book in his most popular series, The Black Company. You can see it here on the right side of the screen. It came out this year in 2022 and is labeled as part of the Tour Essentials series. Before we get to that, let's talk about the cover on the left side of the screen. This is the original cover to the 1984 edition of The Black Company, featuring Soul Catcher. This is one of my favorite fantasy book covers. A few years back, I heard Glenn Cook on the Cood Street podcast discussing this cover and how it came to be. He related that this original cover art is illustrated by Keith Burdak, a friend of his. From everything I can find online, it appears that this cover is Burdak's first professionally published work as an artist. Now, according to Glenn Cook on the Cood Street podcast, he sent the illustration to somebody he called Tom. I'm assuming he's talking about Tom Doherty, the founder of Tor and previously the publisher of Tor. He's now still the chairman of Tor. He had a book buyer in his office from Borders. For those of you who aren't familiar with Borders, they used to be a competitor to Barnes & Noble. They were a large retail chain they predominantly sold books, CDs, and movies. If you were a publisher or an author, you wanted your books in Borders. Evidently, the book buyer saw the cover art and indicated he would buy 50,000 copies of any book with that cover artwork on it. That's how important illustrated cover art used to be when it comes to buying and selling books. Fast forward today to 2022 and looking at the current cover of The Black Company, I think you can see a big difference in design and marketing philosophy. The new cover, I wouldn't even call it an illustration. I think that that is some type of either computer generated image or possibly even a photo being manipulated. While it's a shame that the first novel in Cook's most popular series no longer has an actual illustrated cover, it should come to no surprise given the trends in the publishing industry over the last decade or so. I hopped on Amazon today to take a look at the current best-selling fantasy and science fiction novels. As you can see, Tor is in good company and they are not alone in their design philosophy. Keep in mind, these are all fantasy and science fiction books. To my eye, the Sandman covers, the Harry Potter cover, and the Silmarillion cover appear to be actual illustrations, but the other covers on here, in my eyes, are photo art, computer-generated artwork, and clip art covers. It may not have been the best 
time to check on this because Stephen King's kind of flubbing things up. His new release, Fairy Tale, is the number one bestseller overall, with the audiobook coming in at number one. At number 10, the hardcover, and number 12, the Kindle edition. All of them have the same cover, so the simplistic design is clearly not hurting his sales. Then again, he's such a huge name, they could probably publish this with a blank white cover with black text, and it would still sell like crazy. Same with George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood Volume 1, which has a pretty simplistic cover as well. But there are a number of books on here that I haven't heard of. The Bookstore Sisters, for example, by Alice Hoffman. Never heard of that until I checked out this page. Same with The Last Dragon King by Leia Stone, as well as this Keeper of Enchanted Rooms book by Charlie Ann Holmberg. Also, this Frost book by C.N. Crawford. Can't say I've heard of that one either. But none of these books by authors that I've never heard of have traditional illustrated cover art, and they are selling like hotcakes. And you have to wonder just how big of an influence George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series had on this. While most people refer to Martin's hit series as A Game of Thrones, book readers have known it as A Song of Ice and Fire for decades. You probably saw these covers in bookstores everywhere around the time the first season of the TV show and leading up to the first season of the TV show. I would speculate that the outstanding sales success of these editions made it clear that a fully illustrated book cover was no longer needed for a book or series to be a success. But that doesn't mean books no longer have illustrations. You just won't find them on the cover. Take these three George R.R. R. Martin books, The World of Ice and Fire, and Night of the Seven Kingdoms, and Fire and Blood, Volume 1. All of them have very simple cover art, but the interiors are lavishly illustrated. The World of Ice and Fire is full of color illustrations that any Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire fan have to see. Seriously, treat yourself to that book. Same with A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms. It has one color illustration and many black and white illustrations by Gary Gianni. I recommend A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms to anyone who's interested in getting into A Song of Ice and Fire, but you're not ready to make the big commitment this is the book for you. Fire and Blood Volume 1, which the hit House of the Dragon television series is based on, is also chock full of wonderful illustrations of House Targaryen by Doug Wheatley. Now here are two upcoming sword and sorcery novels that I've been looking forward to. The first is Conan Blood of the Serpent by S.M. Sterling. As you could see, this does not have a traditional illustrated cover. This is a big disappointment as a Conan fan. Epic fantasy and clip art covers I could deal with, but for sword and sorcery, you really need a good cover. But that's just the current state of the industry, and the publisher Titan Book seems to be following suit with that. Although I will note, and this gives me a little bit of hope, that there are going to be interior illustrations by Roberto Delator. I've seen some of his artwork online, and he's a great choice for doing interiors. Now, Gallery slash Saga Press are publishing the new Elric novel by Michael Moorcock, The Citadel of Forgotten Myths. As you can see, this has a nice, fully illustrated cover, and I'm really digging it. From what I've read online, Gallery slash Saga Press are imprints of Simon & Schuster. So this is an example of a large publisher going with an illustrated cover. I don't see any interior illustrations mentioned for the Elric book, 
but that doesn't mean there aren't going to be any. Checking out my Amazon pre-order cart today, it appears both the Conan and Elric book are going to be released on December 6th, 2022. So how did we get here? What killed classic illustrated cover art? Well, I think it was a combination of three factors. All have to do with society advancing and changing in regards to how we both purchase and consume entertainment. Number one, the decline of brick and mortar bookstores was just a huge blow, especially with borders closing down. Just hypothetically, that limited the number of physical books that could be sold. And I'm guessing publishers had to tighten up their profit margins as a result of that due to losing that sales outlet. Not only that, but when some guy named Jeff Bezos started selling books online cheaper than what you could buy them in brick and mortar stores, it caused less people to go into bookstores. Tell you what, I can't remember the last time I was in a Barnes and Noble, guys. With less people going to bookstores, I think publishers started to realize that cover art was not important enough to spend the production costs on an artist. And then once one publisher did it, got away with it, and it didn't hurt sales, the rest followed suit. After all, in business, every dollar counts. And you gotta cut costs where you can. And once the Song of Ice and Fire series, with those very simple covers, started selling like crazy, I think that was the straw that broke the camel's back and basically gave every major publisher the green light to make this the new industry standard and maximize their profits. Number two, ebooks and audiobooks. I think that once publishers realized that consumers no longer cared if their physical books had an illustrated cover, it was a no-brainer for them to expand this philosophy into what was then a fairly new frontier as far as consuming books goes. Ebooks and later audiobooks. Now I know ebooks have been around for a long time and we've had books on tape and books on CD, but they were nothing like what we have today and what's become a reality in the last 10 years. Instead of buying physical copies of new releases, I'll just download the Audible audiobook or the Kindle ebook, put it on my device, take it with me, then read it or listen to it wherever I want. And honestly, when people do this, the cover art just isn't that important. And like I said, this is the long-term future of reading. Number three, online word of mouth. I have to tell you, for me personally, what gets me to pick up a book these days, or a series of books for that matter, is not the cover art. It's word of mouth, recommendations that I hear online, such as Amazon, Goodreads, but also on message boards. Science fiction and fantasy fans especially have always had a community, and that really continues online today on message boards, Facebook groups, Reddit, throw a virtual rock and you'll have at least a dozen people recommending you new fiction to read. The cover doesn't have to sell the book anymore. Word of mouth will. Now that doesn't mean that traditional illustrated cover art is completely dead. This video focused on large publishers, but there are many independent, small and medium-sized publishers today that are still putting out great books with fantastic illustrated cover art. Three publishers that I follow are Edgar Rice Burroughs Incorporated, DMR Books, and Meteor House. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm facebook.com slash pulpcrazy and I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter and Instagram.